Hello everyone. I would like to welcome you to the introduction to mineral processing uh, course. And uh, I will be the presenter for this course. I am uh, Mr. Angari Vume in the metallurgy department of the School of Mines. What are uh, your expectations uh, for the module? when you decided to enroll for the introduction to mineral uh, processing, what were you expecting uh, to gain? We should be sharing on the Google uh, platform so that uh, we get the needed help that we uh, can have in this module. That's my outline. We are going to cover all those uh, indicated uh, units. I would like to first start by explaining some important terms in our mineral processing. Before we actually go into the ore handling aspects, let's first understand what we mean by the term mineral processing. So in mineral processing, what we are simply doing is we are separating or we are upgrading mineral uh, material, minerals material, from a lower value to a higher value and that's what we call concentration and it must be noted that when we talk of our mineral processing we are making use of physical and mechanical methods there are no chemical uh, processes that are involved when we talk of mineral processing and this is also called mineral dressing or mineral beneficiation meaning that we are upgrading from one value to the other. Like if you are starting with a mineral uh, stream with 2% of the wanted mineral, after your mineral processing, you can produce say 60% and that is the upgrading and that is the beneficiation of the material. And here in mineral processing, two main objectives. One is to liberate your mineral value from the associated um, unwanted uh, minerals and then after that you then separate the two uh, fractions then we have the o when we talk of an o you must understand that we are referring to a mixture of one or more uh, minerals and that can be you can talk of your platinum ores you can talk of the gold and base metal ores and basically the most common ores are the oxides and we can talk of the sulfides and then we have the native uh, ores. So when we talk of the native ores, those are elements that can occur on their own without reacting with other uh, elements in the environment. Gold, for example, is an example of a mineral that can occur in native form. And then we can have other metals like copper. They can also exist on their own without uh, combining with the other um, elements in the environment. And those are called the native ores or the native elements. And then the sulfides, they contain a sulfur. And you can have copper sulfide, for example, and uh, the other base metals like nickel or cobalt, they can exist combined with the sulfur to form what we call the sulfide ores. And then the oxides, they contain oxygen. Right, then we should also understand the term mineral. When we talk of a mineral, we are referring to a naturally occurring inorganic substance that is of uh, definite chemical composition and atomic or crystal structure. That is the mineral. So we will know that uh, for it to be called a mineral, you must have a certain ratio of the atoms that are combined there. If you have one atom of sulfur, and if you go to another mineral with two sulfur atoms, it means that it's now a totally different mineral. So a mineral, it should have a definite chemical composition and a definite crystal structure. 
then on the gang minerals they are those minerals which are unwanted when you are doing your processing and that's the gang or the uneconomic uh, minerals in your ores when we talk of uh, the liberation remember you have your minerals occurring together with the unwanted minerals in a rock matrix so for you to be able to free those you need to perform some size reduction and therefore that's the liberation of the mineral values so you have to reduce the size to the size of the wanted mineral grains and that's how you liberate your minerals before you can achieve the concentration or the separation of the wanted from the unwanted and then let's look at the role of mineral processing remember we said we want to liberate and concentrate so you have your feed ore or your feed material of the minerals and then after that you produce your concentrate which is the valuable uh, material and then you also have the mintlings which is an intermediate product contains a little bit of your product or the wanted together with the unwanted and uh, you might need to reconcentrate or you might need to discard depending on the economics of the operations that you are looking at and then you have the tailings these are the unwanted uh, product the stream that contains the mostly the gang minerals and that should be uh, discarded which means they are the unwanted uh, material right then the following slide we are looking at the unit operations in mineral processing we have the communication which is the size reduction the sizing which forms the classification and the screening operation and then the separation which is the concentration and then you have what we call dewatering to regulate the amount of water in various streams in our plants and then lastly we have the miscellaneous operations and that could include processes of uh, sampling and uh, that's part of your metallurgical accounting so all those units they make up our mineral processing and then when we talk of ore handling what is ore handling and these are the various operations that include your ore storage your ore transportation your ore feeding and then washing of the ore remember in your mineral processing plant the various units that i have indicated in the previous slide they are located at different points so in the uh, operations when you are processing you might need to move your ore from one point to the other point and in one point you need to store the ore and also you need to feed the ore material into some various uh, units and then you need to wash the material uh, for example to remove some dead particles that can hinder the concentration operations so that's what we are now going to discuss in our ore handling operations right so let's look at the forms of ore storage that we have we can talk of the stockpiles you can talk of the ore bins you can talk of the ore tanks those are the various forms that we can have uh, in order to store our rom which is the runoff mine ore that material that we are receiving uh, from the mine for processing in the mineral uh, processing plant okay right so why is all storage necessary and uh, you should be able to discuss and indicate um, that in your processing plant the different units they can operate at different rates for example in your combination you can have the crushing stage you can have the grinding stage your crushing stage can be of a higher capacity than your milling stage or your grinding stage which means that uh, in between you will need a storage facility in order to avoid overfeeding the milling stage that's another uh, need for you to have all storage facility 
And then you also need to cater for breakdowns. When one unit, which is supposed to feed another unit, when it is on a breakdown and it's being maintained, you need to continuously operate the other uh, preceding or the other, the following uh, unit operation. So if you don't have a storage uh, place, it means that when one unit breaks down, it means you're going to uh, stop the whole uh, chain of the plant. Right, then another use is to even out flow. You want to have smoothly running of a unit operation to increase the efficiency. And then uh, the other point to take note is the capacity of your plant in terms of the storage. How much storage should be available in your processing plant? And then uh, that can be answered by looking at the equipment that is there in the plant and then the method of operation. You are looking at the frequency and duration of your uh, breakdowns. When you are attending the breakdowns, you should be able to say on average, the worst case scenario, you can have maybe 24 hours when you have a major breakdown. So it means that your supply should be able to cater for that 24 hour maintenance or repair of the plant, okay? Right, the all storage facilities, we indicated the stockpiles where you can just heap the material uh, outside or outdoors. And this is usually done for coarse material. And then you can have the all beans and the storage tanks, which uh, can be constructed with uh, concrete. You can have the wooden, you can have uh, the metallic uh, storage beans that can be used as a storage facility. So we have different designs for those uh, storage facilities, uh, depending on the type or the nature of minerals that you are looking at. That's an example of a stockpile. So you have staking of the material and you should have mechanisms to retrieve or to reclaim the material from the stock piles. So you can have some openings underneath the stockpile and some conveyor belts that can be uh, constructed underneath or underground in order for you to retrieve the uh, stacked material on your stockpile. And then we talk of the ore beans. That's, those are the examples of ore beans that you can have in your mineral processing plant. Right, so you can research on those items that are indicated on the homework. Then we have all transportation, which can make use of tractors, dump trucks, wagons, lorries, and we normally make use of the conveyor belts in the processing uh, plant, moving all from one unit to the other unit, from one crusher to the other crusher. And you can also have movement from the milling circuit to the uh, other subsequent operations, like on your leaching uh, operation. And then, um, so for the transportation, it can be dry solids and you can cater for the pulp material, that is the solids that have been mixed with water. So your transportation modes will depend on the nature of the material that you are looking at whether solid or in the liquid state. Right, that's an example of a transportation equipment. That's the cocoa pan for dry material. For wet material or for the liquid minerals, minerals in the liquid uh, form, you can make use of pumps and pipes. And then we have the conveyor belts for loose material. You can't um, use conveyor belts for big boulders. You need to reduce the size so that you can handle the material via conveyor belts. That's another method that can be used to, uh, to move 
a material. We have talked of uh, the pipes, then the conveyor belts. And then uh, we move on to the feeders. And this is also a way of transporting or conveying material. But this time, we are doing it over a short uh, distance. And it's meant for you to regulate the flow of material from one uh, unit, like from the old storage bin, into your, uh, your crusher. So you need to uh, regulate that movement by making use of uh, feeders. Right, types of feeders, you can talk of the conveyor feeder, which is actually a short conveyor belt, which can convey material from one um, unit into the other unit. And then you can have the vibrating feeders, commonly called vibro feeders. They can also be used if you are feeding from the orbin and uh, feeding onto a conveyor belt, feeding your crusher or feeding your grinding mill. You can also have the chain feeder and the elliptical bar feeders. And these also regulate movement of material from your storage facility. And that can be your stockpile, that can be your orbin, and that can be your uh, storage uh, tank. Right, you also in your ore handling, you might also need to do what is called ore washing in order to remove the unwanted dead particles that can interfere with your ore uh, sorting or your concentration. For example, in the diamond industry, you might need to identify the diamonds using the fluorescence nature but if the diamonds are coated with some dirty particles, it means that you won't be able to clearly identify the diamonds. So you need to do what is called all washing. Right, so in all handling, we also talk of removal of harmful materials. Examples of harmful materials include large pieces of iron and steel from your underground operations, or your mining operations. You can have the wood chips, you can have claims and slimes. And how do you remove those harmful materials? You can do hand sorting uh, from the conveyor belts. You can have electromagnets. You can also have metal detectors that can be used uh, to sense if you have some metallic uh, material in the um, material contaminating your, uh, your stream. You can also remove uh, things like wood chips using um, the vibrating screens and uh, other harmful material like the slimes or the clay particles can be washed off um, using uh, water sprays. And also, you can have washing on the screens. Besides using hand sorting, you can remove your, wonder, your unwanted um, harmful material. All right, that's for the introductory part. We shall continue with the uh, other lectures covering the other parts. All right. <laughs>